You know, and even the media, you know, you, you guys have been very favorable towards the president. You know, it's funny to me that they've never caught you smoking, but they somehow always catch you with your shirt off. <laughs> I mean, it's proud. You're, you're proud to be able to say that. You know, the first black president, you know, well, that's unless you screw up. <laughs> and then it's going to be, what's up with the half white guy, huh? <laughs> And I, I must say, Mr. President, I thought that, you know, that when you got into office that you would put a, a swift end to your basketball pickup plan, you know, pick a basketball plan, you know. Uh, I mean, come on, first black president playing basketball, you know, that's one step forward, two steps back. <laughs> but you, you do need to keep your arms to yourself sometimes. You know, yeah, you know, you went over to London, touching the queen. You can't do that. You over there patting the queen on the back like she just slid in the home plate. <laughs> Way to go, queen. <laughs> and that her hats off to Michelle Obama has made childhood obesity one of her causes. Yes, congratulations. She has... She has started a more intense program. It's called Leave No Child with a Bigger Behind. And I think that's going to be a wonderful, wonderful thing. And there was a big setback for NASA this year. As you know, President Obama cutting the space program and sending more men to the moon. We're not going to be sending any more men to the moon. Although we can point to one major achievement during your time in office, Mr. President. We did get an astronaut on Dancing with the Stars. And I think that's something, something we can all be proud of. And as you know, the president has the most diverse staff in history. They represent every ward of Chicago. And I think that is fantastic, <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> and last month, you mentioned uh, President Obama threw out the first pitch at the Washington Nationals uh, game against the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, they didn't tell you that Biden got kicked out for cursing to the umpire. You didn't bring that up, Mr. President. Did you see the pitch? Was not, it was not a good pitch, no. But to be fair, he had just come from an interview on MSNBC, and I think he was used to softball. So I think that's, that's probably what... <laughs> Truthfully, I'm humbled to be sitting at a table with President Obama, a man I greatly admire. It's such an honor to perform for the leader of the world's most powerful slash poorest country. <laughs> I, of course, am contractually obligated to attend the MSNBC party tonight. Everyone knows how the MSNBC party works. President Obama makes the Kool-Aid, and everyone there drinks it. <laughs> so it's not a strong field. And who knows if they can beat you in 2012. But I tell you who could definitely beat you, Mr. President. 2008 Barack Obama. You would have loved him. <laughs> so charismatic, so charming. Was he a little too idealistic? Maybe. But you would have loved him. I still think we all remember that inauguration day, the first lady was there. And may I say, for as beautiful as you look that day, you look even more beautiful tonight. Now you, on the other hand, Mr. President, have aged a little. What happened to you? When you were sworn in, you looked like the guy from the Old Spice commercials. Now you look like Louis Gossett Sr. <laughs> I've never said this to anyone before, but maybe you should start smoking again. <laughs> Is this the change you were talking about? <laughs> Mr. President, look at your hair. If your hair gets any whiter, the Tea Party is going to endorse it. voicemail from Jenny Thomas in 19 years. But I believe the President would agree with me that the mood has changed a bit since the beginning of his term. At the beginning of his term, Mr. President, housewives were trying to sneak in the house, into the White House. Not anymore. Now everyone's leaving. Axelrod, Gibbs, Rahm Emanuel. By this time next year, it'll just be you and Joe Biden trying to find toner for the copy machine. <laughs> Mr. President, I know you won't be able to laugh at any of my jokes about the Secret Service, so um, 
Cover your ears if that's physically possible. <laughs> but it's an honor to be here. You know, he told me when I was a kid that I would be sitting on the same dais with President Barack Obama. I, I would have said, the president's name is Barack Obama? <laughs> Mr. President, you remember, you remember when the country rallied around you in hopes of a better tomorrow? That was hilarious. <laughs> that was your best one yet. But honestly, it, it, it's a thrill for me to be here with the president, a man who has, I think, done his best to guide us through some very difficult times and paid a heavy price for it. You know, there's a term for guys like President Obama, um, probably not two terms, but there is. Are you enjoying this? Is this fun for you? This is the first meal he's had in months. They say diplomacy is a matter of carrots and sticks, and since Mrs. Obama got to the White House, so is dinner. You're very skinny. She doesn't let you eat. I felt weird about eating dessert. I left it untouched. I've never done that before. You know, the real reason people thought you were from Kenya had nothing to do with your birth certificate. It's because you lost so much weight, we thought you were the guy who won the Boston Marathon. This is how you know this country's in bad shape. Our president is starving. <laughs> North Korea is sending him food aid. <laughs> there are a lot of very big celebrities here with us tonight. Uggy is here. Uh, Uggy's the dog from the movie The Artist. Uggy is amazing. He, um, he can roll over on command. He's a Democrat. <laughs> Uggy, I have some advice. If Mitt Romney ever invites you to go for a ride, call Shotgun. And if the president tries to butter you, run. <laughs> Last week we learned that the president's two favorite steaks are ribeye and seeing eye. <laughs> you know you don't have to reveal everything in an autobiography, right? I mean, you can leave some things out. When you go to a, a dog park, is, is it the same as when we look at a tank full of lobsters? <laughs> I do have one real question for you, Mr. President. What's with the marijuana crackdown? I mean, seriously, what is the concern? We will deplete the nation's Funyun supply. You know, pot smokers vote too, sometimes a week after the election, but they vote. <laughs> Mr. President, I hope you don't think I'm out of line here, but marijuana is something that real people care about, and the fact that you believe Speaker Boehner when he tells you he still has control of his party leads me to believe that you must be smoking some crazy great weed yourself. <laughs> President Obama wants everyone in America to have health care, whether we want it or not. I think I figured it out. You're not from Kenya. It's even worse. You're from Canada. <laughs> this health care reform thing has a lot of people very angry. There seems to be a lot of anger in general. And ladies and gentlemen, if I can get serious for a moment, I, I believe that if we truly want to overcome the problems that we face, we have to do it together. We cannot forget this country is a great country. This is a land of liberty and justice for all. And it doesn't matter if you're black like President Obama or white like President Obama. <laughs> America is and will always be, as a great man once put it, a place where a man is judged not by the color of his skin, but rather by the number of his Twitter followers. As you all know, the president is hard at work creating jobs. Since he was first elected, the number of popes has doubled. <laughs> and the number of Tonight Show hosts has tripled. Congratulations. Yes, President Obama has a lot on his plate right now, but he's now at that very nice stage where there are no more secrets left to come out about him. We all know that as a child, he lived in Indonesia, he studied at a Muslim seminary, and occasionally ate dog. <laughs> so clearly from the beginning, he was a kid who had his eye set on the U.S. presidency. Check, check, and check. Here I come. Now, I know the relationship between the president and the press can seem a bit strained at times. Some in this room have even accused the president of being distant and aloof. When I asked the president about it earlier, he said, oh, and then walked away. <laughs> of course, it's only natural, but Mr. President, your re-election was a little less exciting than the first time around in 2008. On election night in 2008, you celebrated with hundreds of thousands of people in Chicago's Grant Park. It was fascinating. 
This time around, you split a char dog with David Axelrod at the Wiener Circle. It just didn't have the same buzz. And by the way, I have a question, and I think some of you also have this question. It's been several months since you were reelected, sir. So I'm curious, why are you still sending everyone five emails a day asking for more money? You won! Do you have a gambling problem we don't know about? Did you put it all on Gonzaga? You did, didn't you? He did! Well, President Obama has already made a lot of changes in his second term. Sir, you recently appointed John Kerry and Chuck Hagel. Very smart move. You appointed the only two people in the United States who look even more tired than you. It's a great strategy. <laughs> Mr. President, you're going to leave office as a very young man, and yet the presidency has taken its toll. I don't want to alarm you, sir, but you're starting to look like a judge on law and order. <laughs> Just say you're on thin ice, counselor. You could have that part right away. Seriously, Mr. President, your hair is so white, it could be a member of your cabinet. <laughs> 